Hey guys, I've got another distribution review for you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at something new. This is Linux MX16. It was released in December of last year, so December of 2016. And I've loaded it into a virtual machine and I'm going to just be showing you a few of the interesting things which I have found out about it. Uh, interestingly enough, this was going to be reviewed uh, earlier on, but the video actually got shelved for for something else, it was like one of the more trivial reasons, and I never ended up revisiting the distribution. So, um, but a few of you were asking after it, so I thought I might oblige and uh, and come back to it. So this is um, I'll I'll switch to the uh, distro watch page because this might not be familiar to a lot of you guys, but uh, there are a significant number of you guys talking about it with uh, you know with a, with a degree of enthusiasm. So. It's, it is one to watch, I've got to say. So it's based on Debian Stable. We don't see too many distributions based on Debian Stable these days. I actually kind of like it. Debian Stable is a fantastic base. However, it does come with a bit of a caveat according to its About Us page, which talks about, um, although that it does base its distribution on Debian Stable, um, it does have, like it brings in libraries from newer repositories, which means that when you upgrade the uh, distribution, um, or upgrade the, the Debian base of the distribution, which is typically every two to three years, you have to do a fresh install. Although it does say it gives you the option to install all your setting, uh, your configuration files and all your settings and stuff to a separate partition, which doesn't get wiped. So you can do it that way. But because it mixes and matches its repositories uh, in terms of like what's in, in backports and testing, and, and, and although the predominant base of the distribution is stable, because it does, uh, because it is a little bit um, cavalier with with mixing and matching, uh, it, it it seems that the safest way to upgrade is just to do a fresh install every two to three years, um, as uh, as it recommends on the About Us page. So as you can see here, its popularity currently fifty seven, which is is certainly risen up. But I do kind of feel that there is there is a a, a possible space for a Debian based distribution to compete with Ubuntu. Um, because Ubuntu is is making some pretty, I'll, I'll say, brave moves um, with its entire operating system, and every time it makes a brave move, there are there is a seg, you know, there is a segment of of Ubuntu users that will look elsewhere. It might be to another Ubuntu community distribution, which um, uh, you know is obviously not that far away, or it might be to something like Arch or Antelgos, which is uh, you know another distribution which is rising up through the ranks incredibly quickly, or Manjaro as well, another great distribution which can easily compete with Ubuntu um, among sort of intermediate um, computer users, people that aren't necessarily going to install uh, Arch or Slackware and then put everything else on top of it um, and 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 you know make it sing. Uh, those are the power users that are always going to want the the most control over their system. But I'm talking about the sort of the intermediate users who are really looking for convenient operating systems rather than just raw powerful ones and. This seems to have certain uh, attributes that kind of um, that feed into that, but it, it does seem like a distribution designed more for intermediate users at the time being, at the moment. So just quickly before I get onto some of the features of the distribution, let's just check out how Qt apps look in it because this is the it, it uses XFCE as its uh, desktop environment. The default look actually is sub substantially different to this. Uh, it has um, the taskbar down the left-hand side with the, the the whisker menu, the start menu, right at the bottom, in the bottom left-hand corner, which is a bizarre layout. Um, and it gives you a few options to change it outside of what the, the XFCE settings. But that, yeah, I mean, that's obviously... Um, well, I mean, it, 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 you notice it, basically. I mean, it didn't, it, it's not going to throw you or anything like that, but, um, but I have yet to see a distribution layout like that, um, which is obviously possible, uh, possibly likely to confuse any newcomers, but I wouldn't be recommending this distribution to newcomers to Linux anyway. This would be for people who are looking for Debian, but maybe Debian with a bit of oomph to it, maybe. I think that would be where I would peg the, the typical demographic. So this welcome screen, I've been having a look at this, and, and, and welcome screens differ a lot from distribution to distribution. This is one of the better ones, but one of the worst labeled ones, right? Because there is a very interesting part here. So like the wiki, you kind of know what that uses manual. Yeah. I mean, it'd be nice to have a bit of descriptive elements. It'd be nice to have like a little subtitle over here, why you might want to read it. So users manual, are you new to Linux MX? This gives you the basic rundown. Forums, well, you know, uh, do, do you need help? That might be a place to go. Contribute, you know, um, the tools. This is the one that I feel is mislabeled the most because tools. I mean, it could be anything. You kind of have a, a ballpark idea. 
but it's not the control panel when you go and click on it. It's part, you know, this is this new interface, which I believe is part of the welcome screen, which gives you a few quite useful, you know, it gives you USB maker, snapshot maker. Uh, it, it, you can install Flash, NVIDIA drivers, Broadcom, uh, uh, Codex. You know, you can install. Uh, so yeah, like this, this is clear as to this, this tool itself is a very good uh, contextualizer as to the type of uh, user who might want to use this. It's going to be the type of user that knows what codecs are, that knows what Debian backports is, uh, that knows NVIDIA driver issues or, or, or um, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, they're going to know why they need a live USB maker, what a snapshot, um, you know, what a snapshot ISO is. These are like, these are tools for people that already know, like the nomenclature of, of Linux and, and Linux operating systems and computers as well. So very, very useful, absolutely fantastic, but just labeled under tools. I feel like you're burying the lead a little bit there. Um, these are things that, that get tweaked out over time. These, this is This is sweating over the small stuff anyway. It's a pretty good welcome screen. Um, it's got it's got everything it could be it could use. I I think I, maybe they could zhuzh it up a bit, put a bit, a bit of fancy graphics on it, make it a little bit maybe more welcoming to newcomers. It looks very uh, utilitarian and um, and and you know feature rich but aesthetic. You know, may, maybe some some room for improvement. But overall, you know, it's good. It's good. It's good stuff. I mean, it's it's keeping up with a lot of other distributions here. So this is KeyPass X and Caden Live. Caden Live. Um, and a, a video editor that uses uh, uh, it is against where is it now it will usually say yeah it's usually about okay maybe it's in what version is this what version of Cadian Live this is going to show its stripes 0910. Um, so this is quite an old version, if um, if I'm not mistaken, a good couple of years old. Yeah, it doesn't have things like um, uh, the the volume uh, gauges, and yeah. So this is a this is a this is an older version of Caden Live. If it works, it works. Like there are older versions of Caden Live that that are actually quite stable and, and work quite nicely. The trouble with Caden Live is that you'll often find that you'll get like a release that's stable, feature rich, great. And then the next version is like buggy. And then the next version is a bug fix, so it's stable. The next version is buggy. The next version is stable. And you often find that with Caden Live, you get alternating stable, buggy, stable, buggy. You know, it almost seems like they alternate between a feature release and a bug fix release, a feature. And that just kind of means that, whereas you can roll back Caden Live, and that is what I tend to do, it does mean that the stability of the program isn't consistent by and large. Again, I'm kind of sweating the small stuff here because um or, or 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 being a little bit irrelevant because video editing software is incredibly difficult kind of software to make so i'm certainly not i'm certainly not uh, complaining in any way shape or form it's it's just um more of an observation so these are two qt applications that i think are both compiled against qt4 but i could be wrong it doesn't seem to be too clear in here um but anyway qt applications they look great they fit in with the theme um, also, one thing, and again, another personal preference of mine, they have pre-installed a good number of themes. They ain't the best looking of themes, but they um, there is enough of them. You've got a good choice of dark themes, a good choice of light themes. Um, some of them, like this is this is all you know. This is this is the kind of quality you can expect from themes, which. I mean, it looks nice, but it isn't going to blow you away. You know, the fonts look nice. That's Droid um, Sans, uh, which was, uh, I think it's the default font for the Android operating system. Um, Thunar, I believe this is, yeah, one of my favorite um, file managers. Nice, lightweight, feature rich. It gives you a pretty standard XFCE desktop. The XFCE desktop, is there an about button here? We go up here, about, about, about. We can see what version of XFCE it comes with, if I can find it. Where is it? Is it right in front of me and I am missing it? It would be under system, wouldn't it? Oh, it comes with Gparted, again, another useful one. Uh, it comes with uh, Grub Customizer. Those things, I don't know, I've got, like, I've got very, hmm. 
There's usually like an about in here. Oh, I know where it'll be. Ah, uh, maybe they haven't installed it or something. Okay, not to worry. Because XFCE, like it updates once a year, maybe once every other year. It's a desktop environment that is, that is, it is almost the Debian of desktop environments. It is, it is, uh, you know, it is, it is slow to develop, but it is stable and every step of the way is sure footed. So anyway, it comes with a lot of themes that goes for icon themes as well. It goes for fonts, uh, I think. Uh, that's that's about a standard selection of fonts I would expect from a Linux distribution. You might want to install a few extras if um, if you're in the game. It expected you expects you to use a Synaptic Package Manager for the most part, I think, or at least that's the one I've been using. You can't go wrong with Synaptic Package Manager. It's all good. So, oh, there's an update here which um, I've been meaning to do, uh, and that gives you. See, I gotta I gotta say. When it comes to Debian-based distributions, oh, do not like that default setup. But, right, so we can go sudo apt get upgrade, one would assume. Password in. Yeah, um, so it wants to download 112 megabytes um, of archives, and it will only it'll be less than a megabyte of additional space in the end. I won't upgrade now, obviously, because I'm on video, but... Um, that would be the way I do it. That uh, that update manager is okay. Actually, that is that to me. Yeah, that is that is basically just the text output. So um, so you've got that. So yeah, yeah. Basically, you've got very much a GUI version of apt get upgrade. To be honest, at this stage, it's um, it's easier just to hit the command line once you're vaguely familiar with Linux. sudo apt get upgrade. Answer the questions. You're good to go. So, I've been playing around with it now uh, today, and I've been playing around with it uh, on and off for the last, since it's, since it's come out, including the um, the beta, I believe, or the or the, the alpha. It says here it's a mid-weight OS. Now, I don't quite know what that means, because like a heavyweight OS is like GNOME, and it's like KDE, and a lightweight OS is something like, like light, or do you remember damn small Linux or something like that? So, uh, puppy Linux, um, something which is designed to be run on really bad hardware. So midweight is like what XFCE, so computers that are maybe ten years old. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit vague, but but it kind of does say, well, we're not super super lightweight. Don't use us if you want a lightweight OS. But we're pretty we're pretty trim when uh, when it comes up to the to, to our competition. So I think this is filling a very um, much desired demographic and that's the demographic of Linux users that love Debian but don't always have patience for the Debian way which is very slow very methodical um, and and sometimes you just want something a little bit newer to work or something you just you, you maybe just want um, something that has the rock-solid base of Debian but is is um, is a little bit more quicker to set up a little bit more user-friendly a little bit more designed as a desktop environment because Debian is kind of like the one-size-fits-all distribution you know they just give you the ISO you can put it as a server distribution you could use it as a desktop distribution the world's your oyster but it kind of when it comes to you it almost comes to you in like arch format whereas you have to kind of work out what you want to do with it and piece it together yourself so MX Linux uh, it, it cuts away a lot of the the, the you know the time sync elements and it gives you a bit more of a straightforward way just to get Debian on your machine with uh, with a little bit of polish with the codex um, already up and running it's uh you know it's it's, it's um, and I've I've not come across any bugs or any problems or anything like that uh, it, it's all been uh, snappy and quick and nothing has gone wrong like they're, they're, I don't think anything where they've intentionally meant for something to happen um, has, has has gone awry the installation process. Uh, not necessarily as easy as Ubuntu, but really only because it used proper Linux terminology and nomenclature. So, basically, what uh, I, again, I, w I, w I would put this on someone that wants a, just a solid Debian stable based distribution. Might not necessarily want the newest software. I just want something stable um, that is that can be used as a. They've basically desktop. A fide Debian in a way. They've made it a lot easier, a lot more accessible to intermediate Linux users that just don't really want to to dedicate the time to getting their head around some of the longer parts of Debian, some of the more um, 
old school traditional parts of Debian where it required a little bit more work to get a to get a desktop Linux up and running. This 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 takes a few shortcuts. Now, there's one or two criticisms I've got of it, but they're again small stuff, inconsequential. But MX um, because it seems to be a um, combination of like Mepis and some other uh, Linux projects, uh, or it seems to be maybe like a a new iteration of Mepis. Uh, you've got a lot of these, what I, I believe are sort of like um, tools, like uh, OS uh, distro specific tools, which I feel just aren't needed. Like the the uh, like, uh, there's nothing wrong with XFCE and how it arranges its panels or anything like that. You don't need to to, you know. I, I feel I feel like these are not necessarily. Um, adding anything, um, the the smaller tools just to change. Oh, do you want your your panel vertical or horizontal? Well, I mean, if you really cared that much, I mean, it's it's not like, um, it's it's not like you know, right clicking and do panel and then panel preferences. It's not like this is the um, riddle of the Sphinx or anything like that. It's it's perfectly straightforward. XFCE I've always found to be a very straightforward and user friendly distribution, um, simply because it just it gets out of your way. Um, and provides the features you need in the places where you expect to look for them. Yeah, solid distribution. Uh, definitely one to watch. Uh, but it seems to have that sort of steady, stoic Debian base that knows what it's doing. Uh, they seem to be very conscious of um, the quality of the product. Uh, you know, I've, I've come across zero unchecked er you know, errors or any, any, you know, nothing seems to have slipped through. It's all worked as I would expect they wanted it to. I'm looking forward to seeing how this pans out. I hope this goes the distance because I do feel that there is a place for for a light Debian stable based distro for Linux users that are you know that that are sort of intermediate um and and maybe even a little more advanced than that. Just someone that wants a good Debian esque desktop environment uh, and and uh, distribution. So I think that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, that's about it from me today. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.